Brianna Kay is a divorced mom, and recently every video she's put out since announcing her divorce has divorced mom in the title. Brie talked about this over on Instagram stories. I wanna share those today and give you my thoughts and opinions. Normally I don't address negativity or troll comments very often, but this comment has been popping up a lot on my last few videos that I've posted about why are you using the term divorced mom? Why aren't you using single mom or so? Why are you calling these viewers trolls when they're just simply asking, why are you using divorced mom in all of your titles? Why is that person a troll for asking a question? I could use all those things too, but I also am a divorced mom, just like keeping it real. And I don't know if it's because is the term divorce triggering or do people think I should be embarrassed or ashamed about being a divorced mom and not use that title, even though I'm not embarrassed or ashamed and I don't think any divorced mom should be either. I think she's projecting her own feelings right here by saying, should I be embarrassed or ashamed of being divorced? Even though she's saying, I'm not embarrassed or ashamed, I do think she has some of those feelings inside of her. And I think she's projecting right now because no one said she should be ashamed or embarrassed. I, just, I didn't know, am I missing something? Why do I keep getting this comment? Let me know. From my perspective, I think viewers want to know why do you keep using the term divorced mom in all of your titles? And that's what we want to know. Like you did it once, you know, maybe do it once again next month, but you keep doing it. Why do you do it in every video? Like, that's my question. That's a valid question. When something happens to a mom content creator, like a divorce, or maybe their teen parents, that key word becomes their entire personality. I think creators can overuse keywords because you don't want to put divorced mom in every title. You just don't. Seriously, if you think about that, do you want to use divorced in every single title? I mean, no, probably not. But that's what Brie is doing. Since making the announcement, she announced her divorce and a new boyfriend in the same video. She has put divorced in every title. You're more than just a divorced mom. Like, don't let that take over your entire personality. When you get married, we all know you're gonna get married again. Will you change your titles to married mom cleans out the pantry? Next, she shared this message from a viewer. I think it's totally valid and important that you are calling yourself a divorced mom. A single mom might have been single for her entire motherhood experience, but you are navigating in unknown waters right now. If you used solo or single, they would ask why you were avoiding the word divorce. Single equals no father in kid's life. Solo equals deployments, etc. Divorced is correct. And I agree Brie is using the correct term. She's not clickbaiting us. She is a divorced mom, so she is using the correct term. Term. But I think viewers want to know why you keep using divorced mom in all of your titles. Like use it here and there, you know? But why do you use it in every title? I don't think anyone really cares that you're using the word divorced in your titles. The first week you used it, no one was shocked. We were all kind of expecting that, but you keep doing it. And so now it's just kind of entertaining every week to see what your new divorce title will be. Divorce mom cleans out her pantry. Divorce mom organizes bathroom closet. You know, we're expecting something like that every week now. That was just a snippet. Like 95% of the comments were along those lines of you're using the right term or keep doing you, somebody's always going to pick on you no matter what you say. So Why is everybody so sensitive these days? No one's picking on you. Asking a question, a valid question, I think it's a valid question, is not picking on you. Stop playing victim here. You know, I feel like sometimes creators get stuck in this victim role. Oh, they're bullying me, they're picking on me, they're making fun of me. When actually, sometimes does that happen? Yeah, of course it does, yeah you're dealing with the public. There's mean people out there. But other times people are just asking valid questions. But I do just think there is that distinction to call out of somebody who, you know, might be looking for a certain type of video 
of a divorced mom experience versus a solo mom experience versus a single mom experience. And exactly. It's just a key word to help narrow down her content, to be honest. That's all she's doing. When she first started YouTube, she used working mom cleans out her pantry or whatever. And that's how a lot of viewers came across her content. So she's doing it again. She's using divorced mom this time. I've had so many viewers tell me, even other creators tell me, they found Bree's channel years and years and years ago because she was one of the only ones posting on YouTube as a working mom. And if you go to YouTube right now and type in divorced mom day in the life, there's only a few creators posting videos on YouTube using divorce mom, something like that in their title. In my opinion, she's hitting another sweet spot on YouTube. As a creator myself, I understand the importance of keywords and making searchable content. And you want people who are searching for a certain type of content to find your videos. So as a creator, I understand why she's using this keyword. But I also understand why viewers are kind of looking at her with a side eye going, girl, come on again, please. Are you using that title again? Like I also understand that. So right now, Brie is working this algorithm. She is playing the algorithm game, and I get it, but sometimes that can also annoy your viewers. So it's something she needs to consider, I think. I think she should use Divorce Mom in her title. Sometimes, you know, just do it sometimes because you can overuse that word. Any word, actually. You can overuse any word. Like Tiffany Beeston, for example. People often say, why does Tiffany use get it all done in almost every video title or thumbnail? That's a good key word in the algorithm for Tiffany Beeston. That's why she keeps using it, but viewers are like, man, can she use a different word? Like she's not even getting it all done in her videos and she's still using that key word comments like this. Again, I like don't like giving them too much light of day, but I'm going to address them. Uh, the first is about well, you weren't open about your divorce from the very beginning. And that I'm going to zoom in on this comment and read it to you. The viewer said maybe because you weren't honest about it in the beginning and now it's on every title. But Brie read the question as you were not open about it in the beginning. But the question actually says you were not honest about it in the beginning. I think what she is responding to and what the viewer actually said are two completely different questions. Because I would give this advice to any woman contemplating divorce, don't say a thing about it online or publicly. You never know what could get misconstrued because again, anything you say can rub somebody the wrong way. That can happen if you talk about it after the fact too. Plus, everyone already knew. It's not like she had this well-kept secret that no one knew anything about. That wasn't the case. It was all over the internet. We all knew. Plus, before filing her divorce, she spent months and months and months on social media dragging her relationship. So we all knew something was up. And the second thing is, oh, you're using it to monetize. Like, my channel's been monetized for years. You could argue that anything I share is <laughs> being monetized, but I think at the end of the day, most other content creators would tell you this too. I think every creator that I know is pouring so much hard work into their content, whether that's blog posts, Instagram reels, YouTube videos, and they're putting it out there publicly into the world to try to reach and connect and help as many people as they possibly can. I'm gonna disagree with you there. Every creator doesn't do this, and you can't speak for every creator. At the same time, they're also doing it because they're trying to make a living for their family. So I probably didn't need to address this, but I just think it's silly to be like, oh, you're monetizing your divorce. Like, I don't think it's silly to say she's monetizing her divorce because that's a fact, she is. But you can tell she doesn't like that comment. People are monetizing every part of their lives online if they're sharing it publicly in some aspect. And I don't think there's anything to feel, again, bad about providing a good life for your kids and your family. You don't think there's anything wrong with using your family drama to make money on social media? That's interesting. I think you should have boundaries on social media and I don't think everything is or should be monetized. And I think Brie has definitely set some boundaries since April when she filed for divorce. I don't think she shares as much and she's protecting this new guy. She's protecting this new guy like nothing I've ever seen her protect before because she didn't protect Adam this way on social media. She doesn't protect her kids this way on social media.
yourself through sharing your truth and your journey if you're able to help other people. I think influencers tend to hide behind that phrase. I'm just trying to help others. I think two things can be true at the same time. I think you can monetize your content with the intention to make profit. And you can also want to help people at the same time. But let's be real for a minute. A lot of content shared on social media in 2023 is not helpful. It's actually toxic. I think the last thing I am going to do, because one of the comments on here was like, you could be influencing other people to get divorced. So I should just say, I would love to prevent anybody from getting divorced. It is horrible. Um, so I think I'm going to make a video about that because I just very quickly jotted down like what I could have done probably like for myself in my early 20s and even in the beginning of a relationship that could have prevented my divorce. I think this is a good video idea, but I hope she doesn't fill it full of BS. You know, I hope she's like really vulnerable and honest because if you're going to title a video this way and make a thumbnail, come on, you got to bring it in the video. And I hope she brings some solid advice and information in this video. I've heard viewers say this about Bree's content lately too, that she's glamorizing divorce. That's one thing that can be toxic about social media content. Creators tend to focus on the positive, the good, you know, and I get that. I understand that. They don't want to be negative and show all the bad things in their life and complain and whine all the time. But when you only show the good and you constantly state, I'm here to help people, well, does that really help people? I think it's really important how creators set the tone for their content, what they say about their content. And when you put yourself on a pedestal and you say, I'm here to change things, I'm here to inspire, help, motivate moms and provide this safe community and give advice. Well, girl, you better do all those things because some people say they do those things, but they don't actually do them. So don't hide behind that phrase. Been like an influx of some new people watching my videos because of how I've been opening up more about the divorce recently. Notice the stuttering there. I don't think she believes what she just said because of the stuttering. People don't find your channel based on what's inside your videos. People find your channel. New people come to your channel, which is what she just said, because of your titles, because of your thumbnail because of your tags and searchable content you're creating. In my opinion, I don't really think she's opened up a lot about the divorce. And we recently just moved back to Ohio from Hawaii. We spent two years living in Hawaii. She did not live in Hawaii for two years. She moved in January of 2021 to Hawaii and moved back to Ohio in May of 2022. Really the catalyst of the reason for the move back from Hawaii to Ohio was because me and my ex got divorced. We were together for like dating 11 years, but married for eight um, by the time that we divorced. This is what I heard, and I'm not putting receipts in this video, so I'm not going to say this as a fact because I'm not putting a receipt in this video. So I heard Brie wanted to stay in Hawaii, but Adam was like, hell no, we're going back to Ohio. So that's what happened. Part of the reason why I started this channel to begin with is I'd watched all these pregnancy updates on YouTube from other YouTube moms and just felt like I had girlfriends online. Basically, it was Anna Ciccone, who now is one of my girlfriends, funny enough. Um, I've heard so many creators and viewers say Anna Ciccone was one of the first YouTube moms they found. She was also one of the first creators I watched on YouTube, so that's interesting. I used to watch Anna's personal channel. Like, not the family channel. Anna used to have a personal channel. I don't know if she still posts on it, but the way the Sakoni Jolies use their kids for content is heartbreaking. It's so sad. When Brie talks about the early years of YouTube, when she first started, she always talks about Anna Sakoni. She never brings up Micah Stoffer. And Micah Stoffer pushed her, encouraged her to do more on YouTube. Micah Stoffer gave her shout outs. They made videos together in the beginning of Brie's career on YouTube. So I wonder why she never mentions any of that. But I went back to work after maternity leave after three months and I was breastfeeding and just felt so lost and confused. Like I could not find anyone else on YouTube at that point in time who was posting working mom videos. This is what I was talking about earlier in this video. She hit a sweet spot on YouTube. 
with this working mom content. And she's currently trying to hit another sweet spot with this divorced mom content, divorced mom keyword. I majored in broadcast journalism in my undergrad in college uh, to start a channel because I knew how to go you know, film and edit stuff and it didn't take me too much time. And I just- Did she just say it doesn't take her a lot of time to film and edit stuff? Because lately she's been missing her upload schedule and complaining about how much time it takes to prep, film, and edit a video. Let me try to find that screenshot. I can't find it, but I'm sure most of you saw that post where she was talking about how much time it takes her to create videos. And that's why most of her videos lately have been chatty type videos because they're easier to create because she just talks. I say that because I don't think I would be okay in this moment had I not had YouTube and had I not had this community and had not had all the support from you guys. Um, so I did skip a little bit of her video, but I thought it was interesting. She said she wouldn't be okay in this moment if it wasn't for her YouTube community because Brie has often said like, She's being attacked by viewers. Trolls are attacking her. She's getting negative and troll comments. But now all of a sudden, you guys have been so supportive. She wouldn't have made it through this moment without her YouTube community. I think it's fun to have internet friends and an internet community, but I think it's extremely important to have support in real life, to lean on people in real life. You know, you gotta have real life connections to get you through those tough times. To give strangers on the internet the credit for getting you through such a hard time is, I don't know if I believe that, to be honest. I'm just being honest here. I, I don't know if I believe that. I think she's just BSing us here. My final thoughts on the Divorce Mom title is, I think it's a accurate title. I don't think she's clickbaiting us, but I think she is overusing it. And I think that's how most viewers feel. Like use it every now and then, but don't use it in every title. Commentary channels use the word exposed a lot. Like there are some channels that use exposed in almost every title and every thumbnail. And every time I see it, I'm just like, okay, come on. <laughs> Can you find a different word? Are you really exposing everybody in every video? but they're using it because it's a good searchable word it's dramatic you know all of those things but let me know your thoughts leave a comment i do plan to cover Bree's instagram reel it was a head and shoulders ad so stay tuned for that video go check out this video next where i cover Bree's weekend getaway with her new boyfriend thanks for watching